What's going on guys, Coach Vic here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Arenado drill. So let's just jump right into it. Okay guys, so the Arenado drill. Uh, one of the things that you'll see with him is very, very unique um, in his setup and his stance. Uh, you're gonna see Arenado, uh, you know, kind of like rocking, kind of stepping back and forth. And this is definitely not something that I would teach specifically to, for somebody to do during a game. Uh, but of course, Arenado is a perfect example of it actually being something that could potentially work for somebody, but it is not something that I would necessarily encourage you to do during a game. But then again, hey, who am I to say? It works for him, maybe it could work for somebody else. Aside from that, the Arenado drill is something that we can incorporate into our routine as a drill. And so part of the reason is, and, and I can't speak for Arenado himself, but what I believe and what most people will probably agree is that what he's doing here when he's kind of rocking back and forth and actually lifting his feet off the ground is that he's creating rhythm, okay? He's creating rhythm in order to, um, to obviously to time up the pitcher. Right? Keeping his body moving. Okay, so if you keep the body moving, it's easier to get into position, essentially dance with the pitcher. And if I'm kind of rocking back and forth and the pitcher is doing their thing, once they start their windup, it's easier for me to load and rock into a good good timing with the pitcher versus maybe being super still or too stiff. And again, there's always exceptions to that. There always is a Lou, if you've ever, if you know who that is, he stood in the box with zero movement and did not move until the ball was released. And so as again, it's almost the opposite of, of what Arenado does in the box. So there are extremes and there are examples on both sides. Nothing is necessarily a hundred percent right and nothing is 100 percent wrong back to the arenado drill he's creating rhythm in the box with his rock back and forth once he decides that he's ready to start his load now then he can rock into his back foot so as a, in terms of a drill we want to use this of course to create some rhythm so you can do this off a tee you could also do this off a front toss you can also do it off of a bp thrower okay and so this is how it's going to look you're just going to be arenado you're gonna rock back and forth. You could have maybe a little bit of a bat tip. You're gonna synchronize the bat tip where your front foot, when your front foot is up, you may have a little tip. Up, tip, up, tip, up, tip, up, tip, down, boom, and go. And you're actually getting your feet off the ground. So just a little bit of a rock. Boom, boom, one, two, one, two, and go. Another drill to add in here with Arenado is, is the head down. So he is a guy, talk about an exaggerated head down. It's almost like he's looking at the catcher when he hits the ball. And so again, that's something that's a little more extreme and unique about Arenado, but it's a great thing to implement into your drills. It's keeping that head down, keeping your body on the plate, staying square to the plate as long as possible, allowing us to work through the middle of the field. So here we go again, Arenado drill with the head down. Okay guys, so a mental tip to go along with this, along with having good rhythm, is we need to keep our body loose. So that's another reason I believe that Arenado is trying, is attempting to create rhythm, but also keep his body fluid, relaxed and moving and, and ready to get into a good position to be able to put his best swing on a good pitch. Okay, so keeping your body loose, keeping the effort down, stay in a 50 to 75, maybe even 80% effort. You can get a little more into this because it's basically a normal swing, just adding in the feet off the ground to create that rock. Another tip to making sure that you're getting into your back heel, your back hip on that rock back, okay? Keeping the effort low, keeps the swing loose, 
smooth and consistent. Aim for back of the cage. I like back of the cage because I know that when I hit the ball off a tee, this is just a tee. I'm not in tee ball anymore. If I just try to hit cage bombs off the tee, that is not going to be a direct translation into a game. Say I hit a home run trajectory off the tee. That doesn't mean I'm gonna hit a home run in a game just because I hit it off the tee. Maybe in tee ball, it's a home run, but not in reality. Professional hitters work in the cage in order to translate into games. If you don't understand the translation, you start asking better questions. Don't look at pro hitters and say, hey, they're not doing it, that's not what's really happening. If you're doing that, you're going the wrong direction and you're not gonna be nearly as good as you could be because your, your mind is getting in the way, okay? So remember, this has to translate to games. Low line drives to the back. That is going to be sure that you have a consistent, slightly up swing, but a little bit flatter in practice because once you go to games, guess what's gonna happen? Everything speeds up and tenses up. We get more emotional. Things change in the game because you're a human being and you're responding to the environment around you. It changes you. Adrenaline goes up, emotions are up, okay? Excitement is up. Make sure you're hitting line drives to the back of the cage. Trust me, if you master the line drive in BP, you're gonna elevate the ball come game time. Okay guys, if you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see another drill or maybe another drill from a pro hitter you'd like me to break down. Otherwise, hit the like button, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.